Here, let's take a look at the mathematical model we need to solve for the laminar flow over a flat plate. The mathematical model is a boundary value problem, which is governing equations defined in a domain and boundary conditions defined at the edges of the domain. And you might be familiar with these types of boundary value problems from a differential equations course. The governing equations are partial differential equations, as we will see in um, just a minute. Partial differential equations or PDEs. Here are the governing equations. We have continuity, which is derived by applying conservation of mass to a vanishingly small chunk of fluid as it moves in the flow. And it looks like that, du dx plus dv dy is equal to zero, and I'm assuming you're familiar with that equation u is the velocity in the x direction and v is the velocity in the y direction. Then you have f equal to ma applied to a vanishingly small chunk of fluid and that is f equal to ma in the x direction. For instance, that term is the acceleration in the x direction. So it's written as ma equal to f rather than f equal to ma and it's written per unit volume. Um, which is why you get density instead of mass. That is the net pressure force per unit volume on that chunk of fluid, and that's the net viscous force in the x direction. Similarly, this is F equal to ma in the y direction. So we have three partial differential equations. And for an intuitive derivation of these equations, I'll refer you to my free ANSYS-based simulations course at edx.org. And so this link will take you to the relevant section and you will need to register for free at edx.org to access this, um, this section. So let's think about the unknowns in these partial differential equations. You have u as a function of x and y. In general, it's also a function of z but we'll assume that the flow is 2D. So U is only a function of X and Y. Similarly, V is a function of X and Y, and pressure P is a function of X and Y. Um, a note about notation. Um, in some textbooks, you will see that they use um, the velocity in the X direction they denote it as v sub x, and the velocity in the y direction, they denote it as v sub y. So please uh, don't be confused by, um, you know, a different notation if that's what you're used to. It's the same kind of ideas underneath. And let's think about the assumptions embedded in those equations. So obviously the flow, we're assuming that the flow is 2D, um, we are assuming it's steady. We don't have any unsteady terms in the governing equations. We are assuming rho is constant, so the flow is incompressible. We are assuming the flow is laminar. Otherwise, you're going to get additional turbulent stresses in the governing equations. And then we are assuming that the flow is Newtonian, which affects um, you know, that term, uh, if it's non-Newtonian, that, that th these terms are very different. Okay, that's a summary of the governing equations. Next, let's think about the boundary conditions. Um, for that, we need to determine where we are going to put the outer boundaries. That's a determination we need to make for all external flows. So here's the plate, and I have selected my outer boundaries in this fashion. Uh, so my domain is a rectangle. I have flow coming in here and flow going out here. And I, H is picked by the user. We need to pick it far enough away from the flat plate. Um, and we need to verify that our choice of H doesn't affect the solution. You do this by, you know, moving H, uh, increasing H, for instance, and redoing the solution. We also need to check the effect of moving the left boundary. So investigating the effect of the location of the outer boundaries is a basic check for all external flows. Uh, I have seen students um, doing simulations of flow over a car 
getting unphysical results because they have put the outer boundaries too close to the car. Um, and so what are the boundaries, boundary conditions of the edges of the domain? At the plate, you have um, no slip, u equal to zero, v equal to zero. Here you have flow coming in, so u equal to um, u infinity, the free stream condition, v equal to zero. Where the flow is going out, typically you set the pressure. So we'll set pressure equal to P infinity. And we can pick one atmosphere without loss of generality because we are really calculating uh, the variations from, from P infinity uh, through the gauge pressure. And I'll get into that a little bit more when we are in fluent. And at this boundary, I'll assume that we are far enough away from the plate that I can just set it to to free stream. You can use you know, other types of boundary conditions here, but we've checked that that doesn't change the solution. So we either have boundary conditions on the velocity or the pressure. What's the value of H we should pick? For that, what I did was I went to boundary layer theory and I said, I can determine what the thickness is or estimate what the thickness of the boundary layer is at uh, X equal to L. And that's, you know, that's denoted as delta 99%. So at the edge of that um, boundary layer, the velocity has become 99% um, of the free stream value. And I said, I will pick H to be 10 times this boundary layer thickness. And the 10 is a little bit arbitrary. It's based on experience. Uh, I could have picked 15, for instance. In fact, I... I should check that when I change 10, uh, H from 10 to 15, um, the solution doesn't change. And from boundary layer theory, I have, you know, this is the expression I have for the, the boundary layer thickness. Um, and it's inversely proportional to the square root of the Reynolds number. So if I, our Reynolds number is 10,000. Okay, so I'll get 5 over root of 10,000, which is... 0.05. And if I bring L to the right hand side, L is just one meter. So this thickness is 0.05 meters, which means H is 10 times 0.05 meters, which is 0.5 meters. So we need to create a rectangle that is um, of length one and height 0.5. So that brings us to the end of the discussion of the mathematical model. Next, let's think about how we solve the mathematical model.